Oh. Yeah, that is super dope. Have you ever won? Have you ever wondered like how much time do I really have to spend making a song for my next video? Like, can I just quickly and easily slap one together and it'll actually sound pretty decent? Well, I guess that's pretty highly dependent on the video that you're making, but I'm gonna show you just how quickly I threw together a song for my next vlog. I guess if it's your first time. Sorry, I had to, I had to kill a fly. I hate flies. I guess if it's your first time, it's like really difficult to do. Like if it's your very first time, like you've never opened up an audio program ever in your life, like yeah, it's probably gonna be a little bit difficult for you. But uh, beyond that, like it's really, just watch, you'll see, just, just, you'll see. The one we're gonna write today, I think is more of the vloggers like B-roll kind of stuff. Like if you ever watch Casey Neistat or Peter McKinnon or something like that, then like the stuff that they would use during their B-roll, like their drone shots and their like whatever, then that's kind of what I'm going for this time. And the reason I'm doing it is because, well, I'm a vlogger and I need to make, I need to come up with music for this, for my vlogs. And I know I can get them for free and sometimes I use them uh, like the, the no copyright off SoundCloud and whatnot. But, uh, but I, you know, I like writing music, so that's what we're going to do. So if you're used to writing songs, like songs that people want to listen to in their car or on the way to work, then when you switch to writing music for video, then you got to change your brain a little bit. Because when you're writing songs, you're thinking about uh, keeping it super interesting, lots of hooks and tags, and uh, you know, a couple choruses, a bridge section, some singing maybe. You don't have to throw all that songwriting stuff away. You're still writing a song at the end of the day. It's just that you, you have to put yourself in the position of the editor. They're going to want to sync their edits and their you know transitions to the music you don't want like i don't know it's subjective so you can want anything like like kicky um like clippity cloppy real slow kind of i don't know how to explain it let's just do it and then i'll show you what i mean a good place to start, well, for me anyway, is to just load up like your software instruments and just surf through the presets. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter what software you use, so just load up a software instrument and surf through the presets. Pretty much all, all of the DAWs are gonna come with software instruments. If you've purchased plugins, then use those. Uh, and then just surf through the presets. This is Bitwig Studio and I've loaded up a polysynth. So I've started off with my tempo good and low. And it's just like very basic kind of A minor progression upwards like that. I always start the song with like, like a rise, like an intro that starts at zero decibels and then slowly comes up and the reason I do that is because I know from editing myself that it's nice if there's if there's like a slow incline you can kind of you can kind of start the track below the person's dialogue and then slowly swell it in and then bam you can you have a cut and then it goes to the b-roll whatever like cinematography is going on that you want the music in behind so this is what I've come up with for the intro That's it. It's very simple. Uh, it's very thin sound, but it does the job of eluding the audience that something more is coming. For like for the main part, again, very simple. I'm not I'm not changing chords all over the place. I'm not doing polyrhythms and like I'm I've chosen A minor and I've made a simple uh, step up. The reason why the tempo is set at 75 is because if you start really fast, slowing it down sounds terrible. So if you start slow and then uh, you know go up, it, it just sounds better that way. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to record some drums. Again, not worrying about the drum sounds, not particularly concerned about the pattern. We're just going to do a super simple beat that's easy to cut film to uh, into this. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so I did some stuff off camera, but nothing crazy. Here, I'll bring you up to speed. Okay, so aside from some organizational stuff, just because I have 
OCD basically and I just like everything to be color coded and inside folders you know so it's all separated besides that not a whole lot has changed at this point I, I duplicated the bass sound uh, and then played one an octave above so it just sounds more uh, rich like it sounds like this right so nothing too crazy there and um but i did find this other sound and again i'm just playing a c and e um but i'm not playing it in the same pattern as the bass i'm kind of just i'm just playing those notes on beat kind of at random and this is what it sounds like and then i do this thing where i take the snare drum and I add a ton of reverb to it, and then I bounce it out, so I'm, I've recorded it with that reverb. So there's like the, the snare hits, and then there's a bunch of reverb recorded, and then I flip it around, and then I play it just before the snare hits, and that this is the kind of sound you get with that. I just tuned the kick and snare to both be uh, A's or around a, the A note. Now I think it's time for me to add a little guitar. And that's basically it, folks. Don't worry, I am going to play the full track. Uh, it's just kind of a perfect day outside right now to go get some footage. So I'm going to go get some footage, and then we'll see if the song and the video kind of uh, mate well together. First, let's just wrap up a few key points about writing a song for video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more stuff like this and uh, like a whole ton of other stuff. This channel is becoming outrageously diverse, which is kind of cool because it keeps me entertained, uh, and I hope it keeps you entertained. But when you're writing a song for video, you're not, you're not writing a traditional song. So you don't have to go crazy thinking of all these like polyrhythms and time signatures and chord changes. Just kind of keep it simple. Now, that doesn't apply an umbrella to all songs written for video. But in general, if you want to write a song that a lot of filmmakers are going to want to use on YouTube, for example... Uh, and you're going to release it like under a no copy or like a Creative Commons license or something like that. A good thing to do is to just keep it simple, leave a lot of space, um, real punchy, you know, and kind of long drawn out beats uh, where the filmmaker can kind of easily cut b-roll to it if you want to make soundscapes you're more into the sound design aspect of things and we didn't really get to that in this lesson in this this time i was just showing you how to quickly slap together a beat i'm totally going to use this song in my next vlog i think it's perfectly suitable for that kind of thing and i'm going to go shoot some footage right now actually uh and then i'll put the two together and you'll see what i'm talking about in about 10 seconds so again please subscribe if you haven't already hit the thumbs up if you liked it um, i got a web page alexvon.com you can check that out and of course uh, my patreon page you can find all that stuff down below along with a list of the gear that i use okay all right guys take care we'll see you in the next one ciao